Welcome back to the MetaMinds podcast where we help you master your mindset. My name is Eamon and I am a video strategist. And my name is Dan and I'm a fully qualified counsellor. So today, guys, we had Melanie Jane Wood. Uh, she is a full-time speaker for her own business speaking styles. And this was literally jam-packed value moment on moment. And I can't wait to actually go back and revisit it. We talk about how she got into speaking uh, and overcoming a lot of her you know, her past and how she got into that role uh, mm-hmm. through imposter syndrome and whatnot. Yep. Uh, so if you're interested in speaking at all or developing any kind of public speaking skills, this is definitely the cast for you. Definitely. And there's so much in here about self-development as well and how that in turn can help you with your public speaking journey. There's a lot of stuff about misconceptions around public speaking. So there's really a lot in here. And, uh, and yeah, she's, yeah, she's really authentic and uh, just had some yeah really positive chat. So uh, without further ado, Get meta. Thank you so much for joining us today, Melanie. Um, I guess just to start off to give a bit of context around who you are and where you are right now, would you be able to maybe give us a rundown for the last, you know, 60 seconds or so of your journey up until this point? Yeah, definitely. Um, so for everybody, I'm from the UK. I'm from Scotland in the UK and I live in Australia and I've been here for seven years. And really, that was when my self-development personal journey has actually came about. And then I started my business speaking sales three years ago because of all of that self-development that I've done. And now I'm able to help people with speaking as well as self-development as well. Yeah, cool. And um, you mentioned before the podcast, but you were saying that you weren't really in that self-development space prior to that. So (laughs) what was the catalyst that got you kind of into this, into this space and interested in self-development? Yeah, great question. And really it was coming to Australia. So seven years ago now I've, I've been in Australia and about six months prior to that, I was starting to be exposed to um, more books and things like that. The first book that I was um, exposed to was The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. And, and I was starting to get into that, you know, your own business, those types of things. And people started giving me books to say, like, you really need to, you know, like, expose yourself to self-development. And I was given the book The Secret. And for me, it was an absolute game changer in my life. And I absolutely looked at life so differently. Not on the very first read, I have to say, of the book. It took me another read and then a watch of the film before it really went, right, um, there's something in this and I'm going to go with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, cool. It's interesting, I suppose, like, that, that really kind of outlines that it's like people are on such different journeys and like you know you can be like 60 and then all of a sudden you read a book and you go whoa like where has this been and this is about to change my life or you can be like you know 17 or whatever so it's just Mm. interesting that people come across self-development and these kinds of different things in different parts of their life exactly and like there was potentially no way that you know 18 year old self if that book was thrown at you you would be like no way yeah <laughs> you know? or maybe you would have picked it up but mm. perhaps it was the right time like to pick yeah it exactly. when you did you know yeah. and also you, you you know you said that on the first read it didn't really resonate with you or you yeah. didn't like hold on to too many concepts so you know imagine if you didn't then revisit it you yeah. could be in a different position there you might not have like opened up to the idea again absolutely so it is really a lot about timing and maybe the influences in your life Um, And like you mentioned before the podcast, like going into something with more of an open mind or trying to see the messages in it for what it means to you, maybe. That's right. And especially when I wasn't and I wasn't exposed to listening to your heart, but there was a certain key word that someone said to me was, read it again with an open mind and that was enough, I think, for my soul or my intuition to go, you need to read this again. There's something in Mm. it. Yeah. yeah. So often you can like when someone tells you like, hey, this piece of content, what you know, whether it's a book or a podcast, yeah. it's really changed my life. <laughs> you really should listen to it. Sometimes your ego can just be like, no, leave me alone. Like, yes. no, that's yeah. really not. And Dan and I do it all the time as well. I'm like, dude, you have to listen to this podcast. And he's like, whatever. Yeah. And then like six months later, it's like, dude, that podcast. I'm like, I told you. Tell me about it, yeah. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Yeah. I think that happens to us all the time. It's just whether we're ready for it or yeah, we're we're closed minded or open minded to certain things. And it ha- mm-hmm. and it is about a timing. It is when yeah. you're ready. And I think also another thing is um, the framing of when you present that information. Yes. Like I've noticed that with you or with me, when we mention something to each other, sometimes I will oversell something <laughs> and then Eamon will kind of listen to it and go, oh, yeah, it was cool, whatever. But I've o- oversold it because it really clicked with me. Yeah. So sometimes I've noticed to kind of maybe undersell it or just go, man, you should listen to the book. It's really cool. Because I've done it with a few friends where I'll go, you have to listen to it. It's life changing. And then 
it may not resonate they with them push back on because they've got a yes. different experience, right? Yes. But it may not click with them the way it did with me. That's right, exactly. Because we get really excitable when we've learned something that's yeah. absolutely life changing. We think we want everybody to hear about it, but it, yeah, if people are not ready for it, it's more around yeah, reframing and refocusing how you say that to someone. Mm. You could go, "Hey, I read this book. Thought this might be something for you. It's up to you, type exactly. thing," and then move on. And then it, somebody else doesn't feel pressured into feeling like they've got to have the same outcome as you did. Yeah. By reading it but it's hard it's though because when things do change your life <laughs> yeah. you really genuinely want them to help other people mm-hmm. but as you said the whole time thing it really is so down so down to that because they can just be in a particular frame of mind where it's just it's not that they're not ready for it or it's mm-hmm. not right for them or maybe six months before, prior would have been right for them or whatever you know it's exactly like, yeah, right exactly. yeah it's interesting it is yeah so Definitely. speaking and business you know that's yes. that's a that's a role that a lot of people aspire to kind of get into especially in this kind of day and age of of the internet um, you know, some might say you're potentially living the dream life and, and, and business. Um, kind of how did that, how did that, how did you get into that kind of position uh, from somebody who was so far away from that? Mm. And I was absolutely petrified of public speaking my entire life. Like even in school, I would sit there waiting for the bell to ring going, yes, I made it through another day of not having to get up in front of people to speak. Yeah, right? I resonate with that. Yeah. <laughs> and then all through school, then, then it started to be then going for jobs. So I was really driven by climbing the career ladder, right? Because I hated people telling me what to do. So I used to think if I become a manager, I can tell everybody else what to do. But you kind of forget that you're going to have a manager above you, Mm -hmm. right? So you're always going to have somebody telling you what to do. And I think when I look back now that I was never somebody that was ever going to be an employee. I was just in a different frame of mind, but I didn't really know what else was out there in Mm. in the world, really. You know, where I was programmed to, you get a job and you have a job for the rest of your life and that's absolutely fine and mm-hmm. um for 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 a lot of people but i think for for some of us having your own business and having more of that freedom and creativity and being able to not have to conform to what someone else tells you to do and and that's what i love about it and really i suppose <sighs> You know, these things just happen in life. And as I was saying earlier, I felt like my soul or something was constantly chapping at the door to lead me to something else. And coming to Australia, I thought my life has completely changed for a reason and really start to listen to that, really started to listen to what people were telling me around books and different things to do. And then I was really faced with having to overcome my fear of public speaking. And I was introduced and and brought to a public speaking organization. And I remember turning up just going, people just get up and stand and talk in front of people like on their own accord. Like, I don't understand that. (laughs) Yeah, is this what's going on? Are you sure? Like, (laughs) like, what what are you doing? Why am I here? (laughs) And then I thought again, it's like the book was given to me. I thought I'm here for a reason. And I and I stayed and I stayed for several years and really overcome that fear. And I started to see, do you know, there's something in this. And I had lost my voice for such a long time when I was in my late teens, early 20s. And for a lot of my 20s, and I started to see something in it was if I can get up and stand and share my story, share my thoughts, share my suggestions, share some amazing things that I'm learning. And it helps one person. Like, how amazing would that be? Mm. And really from there, I started to develop more more into self-development, spirituality, so that my outlook on speaking was very different to what it was on the day one. And then I started to go, oh, I'm kind of coaching people, mentoring people, and they're going off and they're doing it. And they're getting results. And I thought, oh, and people kept saying, you need to get paid for this. Mm. And and I started to think, really? But again, you come back to that self-doubt and the- Imposter you know, yes. talk about that so much. And then it was all of that going, really, can I charge money? Am I the type of person Am to I do that? Am I that person? Yeah, yeah. And, and I had a lot of those doubts. And then I thought, right, I'm going to start running some workshops, getting some people there, see what happens. And then from there, people were just like, you need to do this. And I, literally, in, in the last three years, it's just developed from there, from literally wow. just taking the first step of developing that, going, yeah, I can do this. 
overcoming the fears of having your own business, the imposter syndrome. Not that that ever goes away because you go to the next level. And yeah, the imposter yeah, syndrome exactly. is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And and yeah, and I, I absolutely love the fact that I am in my own business as much as it comes with a lot of challenges. And, 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 and what I always say is when you suddenly have a business, it just opens the door to so much personal development. Like it, it's exposed yes, sure, so sure. much. Like I say to people, if you ever want to go down a self-development journey, you start your own business yeah yeah and it doesn't have to be the whole quit your job and start a business yeah, exactly. as well, you know what i mean i think a lot of <laughs> a lot of like hustle culture kind of says to do that you know yeah. mm. but it's like you know you can even start a business where it's like you don't even intend to make millions of dollars you just want to make a little buck for something yeah. you're passionate about on the side and even that's going to challenge and develop you in ways that you could never have dreamed of you know what i mean yeah, that's yeah. Right. so that's it and even if it's not you know your intention isn't to make money out of it just to be mm. able to express creatively yes. is so empowering anyway that's right um and the thing that i'm really curious about because that resonated with me about public speaking <laughs> and it is like one of the most common fears we yeah. have as human beings mm. so if you were to give advice to a younger melanie when you were in school <laughs> struggling with this whole concept <laughs> of public speaking what what kind of advice do you think you'd give her to really look within and and not look at what everybody else is potentially judging you or peers or social things is really you've got to look within and believe in yourself and believe that you have something to say that could really help one person. So get up there and do it anyway, mm -hmm. because really what's the worst that's ever going to happen to us? Yeah. And that's what, what I guess I'm curious about with the clients you work with. Mm. What are the most common fears that people have mm. about public speaking? It is the it's the uncertainty of what to say, mm -hmm. how to say it, the exposure of putting yourself out there. So anybody having a full-time business or business on the side, people find it easier to promote themselves in a workplace than it is to sell themselves. Mm. So that selling security element. themselves. Yes, mm. exactly. So selling yourself without people say is that I don't want to look like I'm a know-all or bragging, that type of thing. People just don't want to put themselves out there. And a lot of time the fear is around judgment, failure, rejection, mm -hmm. humiliation, embarrassment. So I say to people, it's not about the word public speaking that you're fearful of. It's actually the other fears that will hold you back from doing something. Mm. It's so true. And we've had to overcome this a lot in our personal journeys, both with the podcast and our own personal mm. businesses and stuff. And oh, I had a point there, but it was gone. <laughs> 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 but yeah, j j just that element of pretty much like, no, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's interesting because you, what I'm getting out of that is mm. self-development and public speaking do go hand in hand. Yeah. So there's obviously a lot of work by the sounds of it that goes into yourself before maybe you're, you're ready for that or until it becomes easier. Yes. So what kind of foundational work do you do with, with these clients to build, mm. build them to that point? Yeah. So mindset is, is, is massive. We do not go anywhere else until we are focusing on the mindset and the mindset is around fears, what's holding you back, what potentially is is the most prominent fear that you have is a rejection. Okay, well, let's have a look at rejection by mm. getting on social media and doing a live. Really, what's the worst around rejection is that people don't like it, people don't comment, people don't watch it. Mm -hmm. Really? Well, what's the worst that can happen out of that? So it's around building people's inner resistant, um, resilience around being okay if they do not get the outcome that they would like and not seeking for external approval for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's about you're doing it because there's that one person who is in a particular moment of their life who is not going to like it, who's not going to watch and engage it, but you know what? They're listening. Mm. and they're taking no and you are helping them and in six months time you know you meet them and they say my god i love your lives i tune in every week yeah and you go could you really maybe just do a little love heart yeah yeah yeah, yeah. every so often comment, share, <laughs> so maybe. that i know that that's happening yeah but it is is it's about helping people go not looking about external approval for things that you're doing so i help people do internal approval mm -hmm. of being able to master coming off of a live before i get them to do things beforehand to set them center them set their attentions so that they've done something for them and now you hit live or you hit record it's not about you anymore. It's about your audience. Mm. So it's about changing the fact that the more you focus on yourself, 
that's when the nerves and the fear comes in it's too. It's so true. Mm. It's, it's like you're yeah. protecting your own ego kind of thing. Yes. And it's like, and that's it. It's just, it's doing its job and that's great. Of course. But as you said, and and yeah, like we've kind of felt this with the podcast, like when we first started, but it's like that, that one person effect, like, and that yeah. really is such a good way to reframe it because all of a sudden we're nervous, but it's like, it's not about us. Yes. Yeah. We're talking about our, our experiences and that, you know, but really it's about the other person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when we get, whenever we get one review or one comment, like we send yes. it to each other and we're like, yes, dude, this is the reason we're doing this, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's, it's just such a crazy reframe and can be hard to get over to that point. Of course. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Exactly. But. And that's why I take them through a, something that they do 30 seconds before the, the hip record or go on live or go on stage but then as soon as you come off you need to write down all the things you did amazing what's Mm. one thing you want to take to the next time you do that what's one thing you want to change because what it stops is of all the inner thoughts all the self-doubts of coming off and going oh I didn't get that outcome that I wanted or that amount of people on there that viewed it's like no if you do that straight away you're then on to the next Mm. and you're just taking one thing at a time that you want to improve rather Rather than thinking of I need to improve everything because we can't do that it's too overwhelming it's unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's too overwhelming so then I go right okay this live or this um, speaking on stage what's the one thing you're going to focus on right do that and then come off and go how do you think you did mm. and they, it's only that one thing that you need to focus on and then we go right what are we going to move on to next yeah, yeah. and it's really chunking it down and breaking it down which doesn't feel so overwhelming yes yeah and what I'm getting from that as well is for a lot of people, it's that that fear, that unknown, that internal mm-hmm. validation or external validation mm. that they're, they're really craving. Mm. And I guess that is then conditioning the mind to focus on something positive and create a little yes. bit of a positive narrative. Yes. But obviously that is an ongoing process, I yes. could imagine. Absolutely. So you, you even mentioned that when you first started that you were thrust into the idea of a public speaking event. Yes. There was obviously a lot of fear there, mm. but you sat with that that discomfort and you still went ahead with it. Mm. So do you still find that that discomfort creeps back in occasionally for your clients or for yourself? And how do you counter that? For myself, if I when I'm going to the next level up, so the more stages that I'm on, the more people that are there, I can sometimes have a little bit of, of that. However, I use the same techniques as I teach my clients. Cool. So I'm not, I, I do everything that I teach, I do every day myself. Because yep. um, I'm not, again, I don't want to bring the ego into it. It's just that I can get there quicker right? Because I've been doing it a long time. Um, But I still do exactly what I teach my clients to do every single day. And it's that moment of uh, last time that I had a speaking on stage before everything happened. And um, the, the, the audience started to lower and it was later on in the day. And I started to go, well, I'm really being um, given this opportunity to grow and really change up my intro because I knew with that audience that I couldn't do what I was already pleased pre-planned to do because then I thought I'm being taught that I talk about it's about the audience and not about me and I had to go out there and do something to get the energy of the room up before I got started which showed me the fact that it was about the audience and not about myself with being okay with the fact that I went out there to do something differently as well because when we're doing something publicly or even something like this we've got technology we've got the people we just never know what's going to happen and we have to be okay with change Mm. so teaching clients and teaching people is that yes we have a formula and a process of what we're going to say we have to allow for spontaneity we have to allow for intuition or the soul comes in and goes yeah we're going to talk about this now this is not where we're going. This is where we're getting led somewhere else. When we go to the point of being robotic and scripted, there's nothing, there's no room for anything else to come in. And that one person in the audience maybe needed to be there to hear what you had to say. And it was something you're like, I don't even know where that came from, but it just needed to be said. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to have to leave room, as you kind of said, yeah. for that element of it. Because like it's great to work within a framework because mm. obviously that's an effective framework. Yeah. But... As you said, if you get robotic in it, then you're just kind of like doing the same things over and over again. And your mind gets into a, you know, like like state where it's not even kind of focusing on it. So yeah. it's like a second nature kind of thing, yeah. which is great because then you're in a habit of doing the thing. But then, as you said, there's no element of like 
presence to it you know yes. what I mean so and that's where some of the magic definitely comes from for sure that's mm. right exactly and engaging with your audience even if it's online or you know it's in person like some people then say well how do I do that if I'm on camera and I can't see people and hear them and things like that and it's still again you've got to just think you know what's my intuition telling me what's my heart telling me come out of your head and think is there something else I need to be here to be doing today mm -hmm. and with that example as well that you gave there what made you realize that you did need to kind of go with something a bit more like spontaneous was it the energy in the room that you felt or did you just like what what how do you recognize that it was the, e the it definitely the energy was the audience and it was that you know that time in the day of two three o'clock where you kind of know everybody's energy is low they've right. been sitting all day Day, people are ready for like a nana nap and <laughs> just in terms of the energy of the room to the previous speakers that you know it just they, they had just brought them down um just in a way because of what they were talking about and and that's what happens sometimes when we talk about things we draw an audience into the they sit and they're just taking it all in going yeah and then sometimes you just need that energy brought back up again because people will just switch off yeah and again that's recognizing where an audience is and yes that probably would take a little bit of time you know for me I've been doing this a while so I was able to recognize that maybe for someone a little bit newer might have kind of went oh I, I really just need to stay on script like I'm really nervous about that which is fair enough these things do happen and and then you learn from it and you go right next time I'm going to think about my audience mm. how am I going to engage with that audience and I and that does come down to checking in with in, intuition and energy you know if that's something that you're you're working on as well like I, I'm a very kind of sense people's energy and those types of things and you just kind of know something's not the same and I need to make a change you definitely have to read the room I suppose yes, yeah. <laughs> yes that's that's the wording that I that I was lost for there <laughs> yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah so in terms of like uh new clients that come on board like mm. when they potentially kind of set goals like obviously it's gonna be different for every person but what's yeah. the potential like average turnaround time for somebody to see some you know really crazy results that they're like wow I didn't expect this to, to happen mm. working with you like how many sessions you know I mean some of them can be from from day one you know, that depends on what they're working on. Majority of my clients have, they've got a live, they've got a speaking event coming up. So really within a first couple of sessions, they'll have enough of the process and the structure to already have some form of confidence. Some of them still will feel a little bit nervous because it might be their first time on stage, it might be their first time on camera, but they'll have more of an understanding around their mindset and still have an understanding of how they're going to structure it. So they get that very straight away. Um, and then we start to work from there through all of those. So a lot of them do see differences basically from the first couple of sessions because they have something coming up. Right. Yeah, Definitely. Nice. So I'm looking at what's your priority right now? Because the thing is, is what I do is it tends to be is people go, I've got a speaking gig in the next couple of weeks. So can you help me? Yeah. And you go, okay, maybe we could have done this a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it depends what they have on. But generally <laughs> is is because I suppose that's the pain point and the push yeah, for people, for sure. right? Exactly, yeah. To suddenly do something about it. So sure. sometimes with some clients, we have to just like, you know, really get straight in and, and commit to it and really work through mm. um sometimes other clients do give me a little bit more time and we have more time to, to 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 work on those things however i the techniques and things like that that i do and if they're committed to what they're doing they can start seeing results straight away that's definitely yeah. a huge part of the self-development thing and i've been kind of caught in this trap before we chat about this on a podcast recently you can listen to or consume so much content but if you're not taking the actions on it yes. you're never going to see the results so it's good mm. that you point out that it's like they have to actually take the actions to yeah to get that's yeah. right so exactly like, and it is about away. tangible so that you know it's very much of a right what are you doing it's accountable it's a commitment right what are you doing when are you doing it and those types of things and I'm there on hand with them mm. so it's very much coming off a session going right you've got this to do like I had a client this morning and she's going straight on today to do a live so I'll be checking that later and going right well she's done it so she's yeah. went on there and she's done a live so it's very much a, a goal setting as well as accountability to going in for sure yeah. so to switch gears a bit to like the business side of things for mm. example um 
how do you go about kind of getting clients and getting speaking gigs? Because again, a lot of people kind of, they want to find themselves in this position. Yes. Um, and I don't want to exclude either of, of us as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, how do you kind of go about finding clients first of all, and also getting the kind of speaking gigs? Mm. So getting clients is around, I've got a closed Facebook group. I'm very, I'm very um, on social media. So I'm on there constantly putting value out there, showcasing who I am, showcasing things when I'm on podcasts and speaking. So I suppose I'm I'm now at that point where I tend to get called or emailed to come and be on podcasts or be yeah. on summits. However, that wasn't like that on day one. Mm -hmm. So really the 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 suggestions that I say is that you you have to start putting yourself out there. Because the only way for people to know that A, you're a speaker, that you are open to doing podcasts, those types of things is start getting visible on social media with posting around yourself, what you do, what you're interested in. Join Facebook groups that people put in there going, um, I've got a summit coming up, I've got a podcast, I'd love people to, to, to interview. So it's really just making sure that you are putting your attention where that needs to be for those things to come up. Um, networking events. So I would go to quite a lot of networking events, build up relationships, and then look at potentially seeing if I could speak at networking events. So the more that you can do in the beginning around building relationships up with key people that you can potentially then being able to speak. The more you do that, the more that you put that on social media, the more that then people will see that you are someone of value to then bring on to onto that. Yeah. Um, so really it's, yeah, it's doing the groundwork. Mm. You've got to be prepared to put the groundwork in at yeah. the very beginning and it does pay off. Yeah, because then the obviously end. it sounds like there's a shift now where people are now reaching out to you. Yes. Where yes. previously the groundwork was reaching out to other people, getting yes. your name out there, That's having right. your finger on the pulse. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And then it, what happens, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at manifesting as well. So I will say that I do create these things as well as taking the action. But yeah, the more that it, it just leads into and, and, it, and it's putting that, putting it on social media, that that's what you're doing. And again, that comes back down to a lot of people who then don't feel like they want to be bragging about themselves. But there's ways in which to do it that that's yeah. not what you're doing and um, you know you're going like you know promoting you guys like today I'm you know I'm here doing a podcast with you guys so it's actually about we're promoting an amazing cause yeah something amazing for people and trying to do something thing. positive yes. <clears throat> yes it's interesting a lot of the a lot of the times when I kind of have imposter syndrome I catch myself like this afraid of negativity kind of thing mm. it's just like it's just made up in your mind and often like when you mm. actually do the thing like occasionally you'll get a dislike or something like that mm. but you never actually experience that negative effect that your brain is expecting kind of thing yeah mm. <laughs> and so you get there and you're like oh this didn't hurt at all yeah, you know? so yeah. it's literally just all in your head and you make it up I don't know if that's everybody but that's definitely the I'm way sure it's very common yeah. me, you know? and especially with the public speaking as well mm. like people create this illusionary thing of like what is the worst thing that's going to happen mm. like am i going to completely blank on stage am i going to fall over am i going to say something you know derogatory or whatever it may be yeah. all of these things would be there but i'm sure you would experience mm. this like most of the time nothing no. bad ever happens no and the, the worst thing is maybe that you didn't phrase something right yeah. or you fell over your words a little bit that's but right. obviously you can work on that that comes that's with experience right. exactly and i say well your audience actually doesn't they don't have a script sitting there going <laughs> miss that word that yeah. word that word got that em. word that yeah, word got <laughs> em. Yeah. you know i say that your audience doesn't even know what yeah, you're about it. to say next exactly like that's an amazing really reframing like how, how exciting is that yeah how exciting is it that your audience doesn't know what you're going to say next yeah so it doesn't matter if you don't see it. Well, that's it. Maybe you intentionally wanted to stumble your words to show that you're a human being. Exactly. You know? Who knows? Exactly. And, and the thing is, we want to be transparent. Like I was saying to a client this morning, it's like you don't, like if you want to have notes and you're doing a live, you know, you've got notes there. So you say to your audience, do you know what, guys, I've got so much value today. I'm just going to check my notes to, to see that I, I, I've given everything that I wanted to cover today. That's human. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. I do, I do it. Superwoman all the time. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, exactly. And I'd say that you're not a you're not a news reader. You know, you're not a you're not a news reader, a weather person. You're an everyday person talking to everyday people. Yeah, be real and tell people you've lost your words. You're reading from your notes. It's just tell them because they can't see it. It's different if you're running a workshop and you have your work booklet and you've got slides, you're doing a live. If they only see from here up and you're constantly looking down, they'll be like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, what's happening? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my notes, people. 
Yeah. That's totally Yeah, if I went to a, to a seminar and you were there talking like a user, and I'd probably get up and leave. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. well, exactly. If you weren't human, I'm like, I don't connect this at all. Yeah. That, you know? Exactly. And I said, it happens to me. Like, I remembered at the beginning of the year, I'd come back from being on holiday. Well, it wasn't it was a working holiday back home in the UK for two months. And I had my very first speaking gig and, and I was right in flow with it. But then this word just didn't, it was gone from my from my mind. Similar to what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. just before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it happens all the time. And I went to say it and it, it just, wasn't there and I said okay we're going to move on then because I got to the <laughs> word. you don't just have a laugh because again it's a human thing if we were having a conversation with someone you would lose your words you forget yeah. so what difference does it make if you're on stage or you're on I mean it's different if they're paying you some pretty big bucks to stand on stage you know but I think that at the end of the day these things happen yeah, still yeah. Yeah. human and yeah. these things happen and so I say that don't feel like you've got to be perfect done is better than perfect be transparent be yourself, be authentic, and tell people that these things happen. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Well, like uh, pretty much coming up, coming to wrap it up now. And I was <laughs> going to ask you a question, which I think you just answered, but I'll ask it anyway in case you've got some more value to add. Um, <laughs> basically, for anybody out there that's potentially keen to give public speaking a mm. go, obviously besides a, a hiring you for your services, mm. um, what are some things that they can potentially do at home to, you know, get into these states to, you know, uh, become a better public speaker? Mm. Get clear on why you're speaking. Get clear on your values and what you're passionate about. What is it for the other people? Once you know how clear you are, and I know that it goes back to the cliche of like, remember your why, but it's remembering what the clear purpose of what your message is. Why are you doing it? Those are the things that when you have those days where you think, oh, I'm having a bit of imposter or whatever, that's going to help you get by. And, and just getting clear on your intention for you for when you go to speak, what's the outcome for the audience, and really doing the homework. Like you've got to plan ahead of time, get to know who it is you speak to, what is it that you really want to add value about? Getting a clear structure and process around. Like I say, like your favorite movie, an hour and a half, takes six months mm. to, to put that together. So it's the same for communication and public speaking. It's like you've got to do the work behind the scenes. Don't just think on day one that you're going to be able to go up there and, and do what you need to do. There's a lot of planning behind the scenes to get clear on your message, who it is you're talking to, what's the value, what's all those things that you're going to be doing with people, but really remembering your why and your purpose. Yeah, love it. Well, literally, there's been end. so much value in this episode, <laughs> and I love that you practice what you preach as mm. well. You're very clear with your messaging and and your why, and yeah, it's obviously obviously you do the things that you teach yeah. to your clients as well. So there's no fake self development here, which is no. awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just lastly, like uh, if people want to hang out with you online, where are you yeah. kind of most active? Yeah. So. Um, Facebook, um, LinkedIn as well. So Facebook, my business page is Speaking Styles. I do have a closed group as well on there, which I do spend a lot of my time in giving live trainings. Um, and then on LinkedIn, it's Melanie Jane Wood. So yeah, come and come and hang out, come and find me and connect. Nice. That's Love that's it. where we started hanging out on LinkedIn. Yeah. So yeah. definitely active there. Beautiful. Thank you very much for joining us. It's yeah. been really appreciated. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. Thank Cheers. you.